Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Now that April is here and the wheat is starting to wake up after some decent rains in parts of the state, some producers are asking whether it is too late to apply fertilizer. For the answer, here's SUNUP's Curtis Hare and Dr. Brian Arnell. Well, as we look across the state, you know, the wheat's at, at various stages depending on when we planted. Our early graze out wheat, dual purpose wheat, we're, we're at joining or past mean, we're at hollow stem. Our later planted wheat that's more of the grain only, many, much of it is coming towards the stage of hollow stem. It's either there or, or getting there. And so, you know, we've had rain, we've had green up. Uh, fertilizer price is really high. Got a lot of people wondering, what do I do? Is it too late to do something? And the answer is, if you have yellow wheat, if I'm standing out in your wheat field right now and I look at your wheat field and the wheat is yellow and nitrogen deficient, I would go apply a fertilizer. I know it costs a lot, but if we just break it down, the yellow wheat, more than likely nitrogen deficiency, means it's gonna be highly responsive to that nitrogen. And so if I put out 30 to 60 pounds of nitrogen, my hopes would be that for about every one and a half to two pounds of nitrogen, I get a bushel of wheat in return. Well, if that wheat is going for eight to $10, now I look at my cost, you know, I'm going to have anywhere between $1.50 to $2.30 per bushel in on nitrogen. Does it impact, because a lot of places in the state didn't get rain yeah. and it's still really dry. So does that factor in at all in that fertilizer application? You know, Absolutely. Practice? So if I'm looking at the fertilizer, if I'm in that region that's still dry, hasn't got any rain, my yield potential is starting to go down every single day. We don't get more rain. And so with that decrease in yield potential, I'm really drawing back inputs. I know wheat has great value, but if there's no good rain in the forecast, I don't have good soil moisture, I'm not looking at putting that input out. And with nitrogen fertilizer, we really do need some kind of rain event within one to two weeks of after application. Yeah, because, you know, for the places that even did get rain, you know, we're having days like this. It's really warm, really windy. That moisture is not going to stick around. No, for that moisture is going out. Uh, depending on what I've been in, if, if uh, the fields were uh, falling a summer crop with small wheat, I've got okay moisture moisture around here, central part of the state. Uh, fallow ground going in wheat, I've got a lot of moisture. If it was early wheat though, especially early wheat following some kind of summer crop, then my moisture uh, reserves are pretty limited. You mentioned summer crops where, you know, it's April, you know, the first of April yeah. right now. So um, it's about that start, that time to start thinking about summer crops. So what can producers do to kind of get a jump start? Well, acknowledge that fertilizer prices are going to be high and it's, it's not going to come down for this season. So let's make our decisions wisely uh, in both not applying too much and applying it in the right. So soil test, soil test, soil test. If you've never had a field composite, take a field composite. If all you have are field composites, look at a zone sample. If you've got zone samples, look at a grid sample. Always think about that one resolution tighter to learn a little bit more. Uh, let's apply P and K based upon soil test results. Uh, if you're using a consultant, which many people do, many consultants use a, a replacement factor. So if I grow 150 bushel corn, I'm replacing the phosphorus potassium I re remove with that corn. If I'm growing 200, 250. This year would be the year that we don't do 100% replacement. If you're using a replacement factor, consider 50% replacement or 33% replacement of removal along with the soil test. On the nitrogen side, I typically don't look at deep soil test reports except for cotton, but this year, because our nitrogen is a dollar or more per pound of N in many cases, take that deep soil sample, go six to 12 or, or six to 18 inches, find out what's there. If you got 30 to 50 pounds of nitrate at depth, give yourself a credit of 20 to 30 pounds. Give yourself a partial credit. That credit is worth 20 or $30 you're not spending on that field and that crop's going to have access to it. So, you know, look at different ways to be creative. All right, thanks, Brian. Brian Arnell, Precision Nutrient Management Specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like a link to some of the things that he talked about, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.